Bobby. Yeah, I am right now. Hello, everybody. Welcome. And Bobby, put the comments up so I can see the comments on the screen. Love to see those. Definitely jump into the comment section. Let us know which market you are tuning in live from. I'm Byron Lazine, sitting here with my real word co-host, Nicole White. To my right, maybe your, I don't know where it would be on the well, screen, but my right for sure as I'm sitting here. We've got Taya DiCarlo, fresh off of a back-to-back-to-back showing and listing appointment day out there in sunny California. Is it sunny today, Taya? Today, there is a crazy windstorm. We've been having very aggressive weather here in Southern California. It's like the first time it snowed along the California Oh, yeah, I saw that on the news. 1989. So we are uh, getting all that water we prayed for. Well, thank you for joining us. I know you're super busy and you've got a lot to share. We also have the BAM captain, Dan O'Neill himself. He just actually helped us release an epic Vegas vlog. I didn't think Taya was in that vlog nearly enough. She was just <laughs> I, a brief I had moment. a hot cameo at the very end. It was like a, a smile, but I, I actually watched the whole thing. It was great. When we're, when we're done with this event, go check out the vlog. Came out really well. Dan, of course is the number one team in Long Island. Dan, thanks for jumping on the event. Let us know in the comments. We see Denver and Maine, Maryland, New Jersey City, Utah, Jersey. Got a little bit of Jersey in the house. Just a little bit of Jersey, North Jersey. And so today we're going to be talking about the top strategies for your 2022 tax filing. We're in 2023. This is the year we file for 2022. If you haven't filed for 2021, I have 2020. I did in October. We're good. We're caught up. We're good. I feel like you're hinting that to me. 2022. We don't want to be behind. We're going to talk about some of the mistakes to avoid. Uh, Then we're going to talk about how to make the most out of our 22 filing. Then we're going to take a bunch of questions and we can get into a variety of different topics. This event is brought to us by Formations. I've got an awesome offer for everybody who hasn't thought about filing their taxes yet with Formations. There's a link down below, so make sure you check that out throughout the broadcast, okay? I see Miami. I see Boston. Uh, The snow is is coming into Idaho. I see Sarasota. Hello. Sarasota. (laughs) Dan was just down there, down that way. see Georgia. What's going on? Aventura, California. All right. Awesome. Let's jump into it. Has anybody here, Dan, Taya, Nicole? Uh oh. Nicole, you got in the business what year? Uh, 2010. 2010, Taya? Yeah, like 2009. Nine, Dan? 2018. 2018. All right. So, has anybody. Well, what about the, you? 2012. Okay. Anybody in the real estate career on the panel yes. ever filed taxes on their own? Like you filed them for yourself? Yes. You, know? you have. Yes. Dan, have you ever done that? No, no, I'm, that's right, insane. So Tay and Dan are a no. This would be a huge mistake. He, well, it's 2010. I think I was running in the red. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I think all I, I paid board dues and maybe had one rental my first year. So you did no business. You're that's like, fair. I can just file this for myself because yeah, I'm literally at a loss. Yeah, I'm literally at a loss. Okay. Yeah. And then once you started to make money in yes. this business, you did not do that? I did not do that. All right, good. Yeah. So, we're starting at zero here. Nobody should file taxes ever in 2023 for 22 themselves. Absolutely. You're running a business, yes. right? You, this is this is like basic stuff. But let's. I let's, told you from the beginning, I'm the like what not to do. Right. Well, we're going to talk about some of all, all of our Thank mistakes. You, right? I'm the not what not to do. Has uh, anybody I'm gotten sure. to the year to the end of the year and not had enough savings to cover taxes? Dan or Tay, have you ever have you ever gotten in that position? Not no. yet. I Not have, yet. Yeah, I pull never. it up. I've had liens on my home. All right, so talk about some of the mistakes you've made, Nicole. Every single one of them. Every I didn't pay one quarter of your home, liens. You had, had a lien on. <laughs> I, I I could pull it up. I think it was a thirty five thousand dollar lien on my home. Yeah, I mean, oh I could God. pull it on MLS right now and look at it. Oh yeah, I didn't I didn't do quarterlies. I didn't save. I um I probably honestly don't even think I filed taxes like you know like we're talking about right now we're doing 2020 like i don't even think i filed taxes the right year like i missed years it was it was it was it was bad let let us know in the the comments if you've been in that situation before or if maybe maybe you don't want to share maybe you're in that situation right now you don't have to my husband may kill me but yeah no i mean it was we started making money 
again, I was a stay home mom, started making money. And all of a sudden I was able to afford what I thought I could afford was like a Disney trip. I was like, Oh my goodness, I can now afford my husband's a teacher. So like I could afford Disney. Can you like, and we went to Disney that year and then like, Oh my goodness. Like I can actually afford like my children, like, clothes for back to school like it so it it was unfortunately a little bit of a snowball effect because as the money was coming in it was all as though i i hit and the friggin lotto what's happened in the last couple of years all right the money has come in in a big way in a significant way in right. 2020 yep to the middle you know 2020 mid 2020 it's scary to mid 2022 and i've seen a whole bunch of instagram photos of the white BMW. Oh my or goodness! The white Mercedes Benz. Tell I didn't do that. You're not rocking the white BMW, are you? No, no. I I like to keep it luxurious but humble. So I drive a Volvo XC90. So it's a very nice car, by the way. Is it white though? It was white. Yeah. I just renewed my lease, and um, and it's a denim blue. Oh, but Ooh, it's I a like very that. nice car. Very but it meant a lot to me that I kept it high end luxury, but also very relatable. Yes. Because you never want people thinking that you don't need the business. And right. they will think that. As I just Realtor get, Roy I from start. Boston says he's got the white BMW. How many white BMWs do we have right now in the comments? Let us know. How many white BMWs are white? There we go. Erica, white BMW. That's the classic Realtor. I, I, Nothing I, wrong with the white I BMW. Sold, I got rid of mine. Yes. It's such a friggin' piece of shit. <laughs> I spent so much money on that damn thing. I, I think that before you and I actually like joined like the team, remember you were referring and listening to me and I showed up and I think you have it on video. I have it on You're video. You're like, oh, look at this big the white, realtor. The white BMW is the yeah. classic realtor car. Dan just bought a fancy car. Dan, yeah, what, Mercedes. What just yeah, I did. But that was after four years of saving, paying my taxes on time, taking care of my parents and making sure that I was in a good position. But did I you think pay the for it? I, I did. I think that the reason that I didn't fall into that situation, like Nicole, you were mentioning, is because I I have a father who has, um, you know, he had a business and owed the IRS a lot of money. And I'm sure he's not on here, so I don't mind saying it. The IRS is not somebody to mess with. Mm -hmm. And what they have done to him, and I have the same name as him, so I get some of the mail. What they have done to him over the last 10 plus years made me, like, immediately day one, I went to my account and was like, hey, do I open up an S-Corp? And the guy's like, Buddy, you haven't even you, you haven't even been licensed for a month. What do you? No, don't do that. So I learned from my father's you know mistakes, and that's why yeah. like right away, like I just saved everything that I made. Yeah, it's smart. I mean, I, and I try to tell all of the agents here too, because again. You know, like when they start getting these checks, a, a lot of them are sort of in the same situation, you know, like they're they're just coming out of being home with their kids or what have you. And it's 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 scary because it's it's a domino effect. You know, if I'm behind if I was behind probably almost four years, I was always paying that like I was always a year behind paying. Mm -hmm. um, so I was never paying for the actual year. It was almost like two years um, it's a, it's a scary thing. I mean, well, I, and, and you know, the other thing too, is like nobody, well, before I even get into this, while you're here, make sure you throw us a couple of likes, throw us a little a couple of comments. Okay. We're taking this, uh, I'm, mid -day. they're giving us other cars still. We've got throw, Hondas throw, and throw Toyotas. Likes if you, if you appreciate mm -hmm. us doing this, but, uh, part of the problem too, Nicole is like, nobody explains this stuff to you, right? No. Like you get your license, right? You go through the whole entire course, you learn about riptarian rights and you learn about all these, you know, crazy things that you never have to use. Nobody actually explains like, hey, this is what you need to do when you get a commission right. check. You have to save money for taxes. They're going to come around, right? Like part of it is just not even understanding. And to this day, I, I kind of still like in some aspects don't understand because there are so many levels and so many tiers, right? right? Whether you're by yourself, whether you do a, a DBA or an LLC or an S Corp, or now you have employees, right? You have a W-2. Right. I just got a letter in the mail and I, we'll put screenshots up later. My accountant texts me every day. Like, I don't know I don't, if I pay my taxes daily or what. But every time he texts me, my heart drops. Like it sinks immediately. So I just got a letter saying that I owed, you know, $26,000 uh, to the to workers comp. I'm like, who, who the hell is workers comp? Mm -hmm. Turns out it was just kind of like a scare tactic. If I didn't have something set up the right way, I would owe that money. Point being is there are so many different levels, right? Like as you get on or as you continue to go in the business, so like starting it from day one, and I think Byron getting like maybe to team leader and then to also having employees W2, I think is a really good way of like kind of combining all of the above. My well, I think it goes back full circle to what you said at the very beginning, right? Get yourself an accountant. Yeah. yeah, yeah I mean, that's well, and not one. just – oh, sorry, Byron. Go ahead. No, Tay, you go ahead. 
I was going to say that it's also, there's two different things happening here. There are people who don't know any better and are kind of like, go with the flow. I'll figure it out as I go along. And then there are people who actually do know better, but our business can be so feast or famine that they're banking on the fact that the business will come. Okay. First quarter is really slow. And I've got an, I've got an assistant yeah. to pay, and I've got marketing expenses. Absolutely. So I'll just, I'll deal with the taxes later and they kick the can down the road and they may even get to the end of the year and say, Oh shit, I actually made a ton of money. Where are my write-offs? Are there any losses that I can take? And you learn all these things when you do have a good bookkeeper, a good accountant, and they'll actually tell you, okay, you know what, you're, you know, for, again, I'm not giving advice, but I'm giving an example, right? Like right. if you have a stock that has, you know, taken a, a loss, but you had a huge gain, you could talk to your accountant about like, how can we even this out and postpone paying the tax this year. There are creative ways, like some of the most wealthy people in the world will hire the best accountant, the best bookkeeper, the best financial advisor. So that way they can understand the laws and use it to their benefit and eventually will pay the tax. But if it doesn't make sense to pay it this year, there are legal ways where you can kick it down the road, but you have to be looking at your business from a bird's eye view always. Right. Look at this guy. I can't even make this up. I think there's only 28 days in February because of leap year. That's my accountant right there. <laughs> That's literally my accountant. This guy emails and texts me every day about taxes. I don't understand. It's like I, I pay them weekly. <laughs> well, the, the, the best way, go ahead and, and, and uh, share Dan's slide here. I swear to God, I can't even make these are, these are text messages with Dan's account. So hit the thumbs up if you love Dan showing us. Oh, he's pretty consistent. His text thread with uh, Brian, the accountant consistent. slash yeah. financial, financial advisor. Ignore so, him. That's great though. At least he's keeping you accountable. My my accountant yeah. sent me a thing like, "Hey, my 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 fee went up twice. Make sure you sign up because I'll fill your spot with somebody else." So. Eric, Dan doesn't have a uh, Android, or I wouldn't be friends with him. We wouldn't, no, we wouldn't be chatting buddies does. if texting buddies if, if he had an Android. All right. So <laughs> no, number one, if you're filing yourself, if you're planning on filing yourself for 2022, later, th you know, in the next month or two, but that's a mistake. Pump the brakes. Get a professional. We have an offer down below where you can connect with formations. This is what they do for real estate professionals. They make sure that you never overpay on taxes again. Okay. So that's step one, making sure you have a professional in your corner. Uh, number two, making sure you have savings so that you don't get into April when you're supposed to file and you're like, oh my goodness, I don't have the money to cover it because I was planning on the business looking like it looked like in May, 2022 in May of 2023. And here's something that I'm really hoping people are waking up to quarter three and quarter four of 2023 are going to be a bumpy road. Agents, this is going to be a very up and down volatile market right now. If you haven't experienced it yet in your market, you will let me know if you're feeling it in your market in the comments. Okay. So it is, it, it is obviously all the stuff we've been talking about, how to make sure that you protect against that is super relevant. I know for me, Tay, and I'd love to know what you've done. Cause you've never gotten to the end of the year where you're like, Oh my gosh, I'm short on money Yeah. for me. When I figured out my banking, that's when I insured, I was always going to have money. I pay monthly now, but I was paying quarterly before that. And before that I was paying, you know, just annually at the annually, end of the year, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. When I figured out my banking, okay, my checking account that is connected to my brokerage needs to be a business checking account. So all commission checks need to one, go into the business checking account. From there, I need to do automatic transfers every single month, an automatic transfer from my business checking into my home checking. So my personal household, all my bills, you know, money that money that the, the wife would have access to money that, you know, the family right. lives off of. That's the family checking account. OK, so automatic transfer into household expenses. Uh, Byron, for, for people that might not know, you do you use a service. I do the same thing. I use a service ADP that essentially every single month, it's just an automatic draw. Like I'm drawing a salary to myself of which it goes from business account set salary. Yep. My personal so I use it. I enroll in a service to do that. 
You're not actually I, doing that yourself, correct? I am doing, I am paying myself. That's when we get into some of the S Corp stuff. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. So I am paying myself a salary, mm -hmm. but I'm just talking before I even got to that point, before okay. I, I started setting up an S Corp, this is when I was still an LLC. Got mm -hmm. it. Business checking account, all commission checks going into business checking, automatic transfer every single month going into my household checking, automatic transfer every single month going into tax savings account to pay for the taxes, okay? And then automatic transfer into personal savings. That's a very simple four account method that you can use. I use Bank of America, not, nothing unique, right? And you can set up these automatic transfers. Now, what happens when you don't have consistent closings going into your business checking, now you have to start to make exceptions. That's when things get uh, you know, a little bit wonky because you don't, you're not able to meet your automatic transfer. So it's all about making sure you have consistent checks. It's why I always advise agents like focus on how many checks you can bring in every single month, not necessarily what your split is, right? How many checks can I start cashing every single month? I'd find out too, if your brokerage, I know a few brokerages, I know, I know at the very least like Berkshire Hathaway, uh, like offers that out to their agents where they will actually take money out for taxes too. So I would definitely recommend you guys ask some of your brokerages too, if like they, they're, if they're feeding it out for you. And I know what you're saying. It's helpful for people yeah. to like have their taxes taken out. Yeah. I would only advise that if you're like, you know, an absolute abuser of the system, <laughs> meaning you can never, because anytime someone's taking money out for you, yeah. you're paying ahead of time. I want to pay when I have to pay. Yeah. I want my money in my account. Well, no, I think I, I, I believe they're putting out. it into a separate account. No, I know they are, but like I'm hearing the reason what you're saying, people, yes. if anybody on here, you, you own a business, if you're getting a tax return, it's because you paid too much money. You should oh, never yeah. have a tax return. No, you should I never pay too much money. Return. And I don't want somebody taking my money before they have yeah, to either. That, right. That's just mine. All right, let's talk about... Um, you know, did, did you, were you always an LLC or an S -corp, corp? What are you today? Uh, Taya, did you make, you know, any mistakes before you became an LLC or oh an S corp? God. I don't know what you set up Absolutely. today, but talk about that. Absolutely. Well, I'm an S corp right now. Um, but when I first got started, I, I mean, my first year in the business, when I was actually on my own, I sold $923,000 worth of volume. So basically I would have been better off working at Nordstrom with my college degree than working in real estate. And that next year I ended up doing 10 million in volume the year I was pregnant with my first child. And so it wasn't until I actually started actually doing volume that at the time, my, my, you know, my ex and I, my husband at the time, we were like, all right, he was a CPA and now he's a financial advisor. So I fortunately had someone, you know, that I lived with that was like, you, you need to now establish an S corp. It's worth the money for you to get this set up um, and eventually have someone be monitoring the money in and the money out. Um, and quite frankly, I mean, I'll, I'll be honest with you, for any woman or any man, for that matter, who's gone through a separation or a divorce and your partner was the one who was responsible for all the finances and for balancing the books and knowing what everything costs and, and you're doing the other duties because in a relationship, you divide and conquer, right? And I've in this past year had to learn a whole new skill set on how to really lean into my accountant. I'm like, Dan, I, I text message my CPA all the time. I was actually just texting her this morning, like friendly reminder. I need my year to date income. I need to analyze this because step one, before you even start thinking about moving money around, step one is you need to know what's, what's your overhead. Mm. What's your living expense overhead? What is your business overhead? If you don't know those numbers like this, we've got a problem. We've got to know how much money do you need to keep the lights on at home and the lights on in your business. Tay, are you willing to share? You just went through a divorce last year. You've been open about that. You shared that on Instagram. Make sure you're following Tay. She's the best follow in oh, real you. estate on Instagram. Would you suggest knowing what you know now that even if you're married, you keep business account your account, all these different accounts separate, whether you're going to stay together forever and always, or get a, you know, potentially get a, like, what would you do differently outside of like having a part on what, what the bills are? What would you do differently I with your account? I would do it exactly setup? the same way. I would do it exactly the same way as we did. We had a great setup and we still have a great setup. I kept my personal accounts. He kept his, and we created a joint account. 
And so we would contribute money to the joint account. Is that the household account? The yeah, that, account? Was, that was the household yeah. account that all the bills were paid out of. And it was really great because, you know, I still had my financial independence and he had his, yeah. um, but we still had the joint effort. We were never tit for tat, like dividing everything, even Steven, like I let him take the reins on a lot of that. And if I could do anything differently, I would get more involved. And in, even if I'm not in charge of paying the bills, just take a more genuine interest of what's what it is and how much it is and being more confident with the math aspect of it. Because if you're, if you're not good at something, what's, what's the first thing you do? You're like, well, I'm just not good at it. I'm just gonna let somebody else do that. And, and you kind of put your head in the sand. You don't have to be an expert in something, but you should take a genuine interest when it comes to your money. And when it comes to numbers, even if you're not good at it, you need to get interested be curious, educate yourself, not on like how the sausage is made, but just know the the basics of what you need to keep the lights on. Let, let us know in the comments if you're married, if you have a partner, a life partner, what your situation is. Love, love to know. And tell you what you just described, that's that's exactly right. You know, having a, a joint household account, but keeping your business account separate because, hey, it's human nature. If all the money is just going into one account and everything's going there. And then at the end of the year, there's this huge tax bill. You, you could have one spouse saying, what the heck? Why do we owe so much money? All the money's just been going in there and we've been spending it. Maybe the other spouse has taxes getting taken out or maybe both are business operators, right? Maybe you're both self-employed and one person's been paying the taxes over here. The other person hasn't. It gets messy, right? Where if you're both really organized and diligent about where the money from whatever source is coming into a business checking account. It makes your accounting at the end of the year very simple, right? Totally. If you have one credit card for business expenses attached to that account or debit card, it makes everything very simple for filing at the end of the year. And then it doesn't mean you each have to put even Steven money into that household account. Somebody may be putting in 8,000 a month and somebody may be putting in 4,000, whatever it works for you and your family and for what those bills are, but you want to keep those businesses separate or those different sources of revenue. You may have rental revenue. You may have your real estate business revenue. You may have a spouse who's working some type of W-2 job. Those are three streams of income. And then we need to decide from those streams, what's going to go into the household account for our situation, right? Well, speaking of that, Byron, if you do have an additional stream of income, you like as an individual agent, right? So like for me this past year, I've had a lot of income come from either speaking engagements or my Instagram account or um, like uh, basically I wouldn't call it like an influencer type thing, but like a, a, a speaker, let's just call it a speaker. So that is a different entity and different business than my S corp of what I call TDRE, Teo DiCarlo Real Estate Incorporated, right? So eventually I'm going to have another account so that way I can actually see where's the money coming from? What's the source? What are the expenses? So then that way you can limit your expenses because in a shifting market where things are getting a little hairy, you yeah. need to look back. Like I did this past year, I had to do a layoff. I had to cut some expenses because when I looked at it as a whole, I was like, holy shit, I'm spending how much money on what? It's go and, and what was my return on that? You're out. And you're in, you know what I mean? You have to be able to look at those numbers and make those money moves or else you're just going to be, you know, on a road to nowhere. I did a video on the account setup, was just referenced in the comments and maybe Bobby can just drop that in the comments. People want to want to grab that. Um, Dan, in terms of the the accounts, anything to add, add there? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I've made... I make mistakes, I would say monthly, but I think the biggest mistake or, or something that happened to me in the very beginning was I, I went to my accountant and I asked about setting up an S Corp. Uh, Taya mentioned your first year you sold, you know, $1 million worth of real estate. That was it. And the next year you exploded, right? I got very fortunate and very lucky in my first year. So I went to my account and I said, Hey, uh, should I be doing an S Corp? Should I do any of these things? And they said they, like verbatim, no, most people get their real estate license as a hobby. You will not be in the business for longer than two or three years. Mm -hmm. So I just didn't do anything. I was very fortunate and I did about 20 something million dollars. So I did not have the S Corp set up. So when the IRS came <laughs> knocking on my door, I had to pay, I think it was almost up to like $30,000 in penalties because 
it was all under my personal account. I had no expenses. Okay. I had no write-offs. I had nothing. So Damn if that guy's watching and this, I hope that you stub <laughs> your toe. That is me being nice. Oh my so this God. is, Dan, this, this is a common mistake that real estate agents, real estate professionals, and being a real estate professional under the tax code is one of the biggest advantages in America today. Okay, so that's a whole nother category. Why being just labeled as a real estate professional and agent is such a great tax situation for you. But if you don't set up the right way, you can't take advantage of it. Right. So typically, and this is not strict financial advice. This is what worked for us. There's a link down below where you can talk to formations about your particular situation in your particular state. Everything's going to be a little bit different when, when it gets personalized down to you. But typically speaking, a real estate agent should be set up as an LLC or as an S corp for their business. Now formations and other financial advisors are going to tell you that to be an S corp, it really starts with, you've got to be bringing in about $80,000 per year. Okay. That that's really the income you need to be bringing in until you cross over 80,000. I know formation said this on a webinar we did with them. That's you're not going to be an S corp to Dan's point. You know, if you're making 12,000 bucks a year, okay. Yeah. It's, it's not, it's not going to be, it's not going to make sense for you. Okay. Now, if real estate's a side thing for you, you make it 35, $40,000 a year. It probably still makes sense to be set up as an LLC. There's still going to be tax advantages to be an LLC. And in your state, it may still be more advantageous to be an LLC over an S corp. It's not always uh, going to be the case for an S corp, but generally speaking right now, for agents making over 80,000, you're going to want to be looking into an S corp. There's some real tax benefits. You can pay yourself as an employee and you can reduce your tax burden. Anything on, on S corp, we can go right around with, with Nicole Taya than Dan. I don't, I don't, I'm not S -corp an S corp or S corp or LLC. LLC. Yeah. I'm not an S corp. LLC. Yeah. Taya S corp. S corp. Dan S corp. Yeah. All right. And I, I'm, I'm doing the S corp as well. And um, listen, it's going to be personalized advice. The, the LLC S Corp thing uh, is something you should be doing. If you're full-time in real estate, one of the two, it's all, everybody's situation is going to be a little bit, a little bit different. And by the way, Nicole makes way more than 80,000 80, a year. So if you're saying, yes. well, she must not make 80,000. Uh, I don't know. I just think you pulled in three bills plus last year. I don't know if the, I don't want the IRS watching, but no, it's, we're, we're good. No, uh, I mean, yeah. I, I, I have other, I mean, I have, yes, I, but I'm all, I have other, I have other ways that I, pay out like I pay my kids yeah I, I'm able to pay my each of my kids twelve thousand dollars a year and they help me with my real estate so that right off the off the riff is a huge is sort of a huge help for me I think the reason that I didn't go s corp is um I, it, it's 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 a lot obviously I, I I don't get uh texts from my CPA every month like I'm not on the same grid as you or and I feel as though with an S corp, it, it's a lot more monthly. It's a lot more work on your side to do that. And I knew personally um, that that I, I I wasn't ready to wrap my brain around it. Well, so. and there there are advantages to, to doing LLC versus S corp, right? Like I believe one of them is you can't have business credit with an S corp, so I can't open up a credit card under my like Dan O'Neill Real Estate specifically with an S corp. Whereas if I had an LLC, I I could. Um, so there are advantages and disadvantages to either. It's kind of like per case. But for example, I have an agent on my team that I had to sit down with and I said, hey, is this your career? Are you full time? And her answer was yes. OK, how much did you do last year? Told me the number. Mm -hmm. And when I was speaking with her a couple of weeks ago, I'm like, hey, did you get around to opening that S Corp? She went from, you know, 60 grand, 70 grand in GCI to like 200. And she said, no, she's going to get crushed on her taxes. Huge, huge. So, yeah. If you're if you're full time and this is your career, a certain point you got to sit down and find an accountant or formations and open that up. Uh, Nicole, do you know how old the kids have to be in order to start putting them on salary? I, I don't know that. I think but that I believe it was. I I honestly I I feel like I heard from um because I started way again. I had oh, you a, don't know the answer. I right? think it was seven. I believe she it was seven. Seven Let's years old. Let's save the the questions because we're going to do a follow up email to everybody that yeah, signed up. I Where do you believe get... that it was seven again. I had a terrible account. And so I didn't start paying my kids until they were, maybe my youngest was 10, but I do believe it's seven that you could start paying your kids. Uh, Tristan asked, do you need an EIN number to set up a business checking account? Yes, you do. Yeah. Right. It's why you're going to want to find out in my situation right now, 
Should I be LLC or should I be S Corp? Or in the rare case, should I be some other, you know, corporate designation? It's probably going to be one of those two. You're going to want to set that up so you can go get your EIN number and start your business checking account. You've got to get your commission checks flowing into that one account and nothing else, right? And you just transfer from there. Okay. Formation says that 90 plus percent of the do-it-yourself tax returns, or maybe you're going to, maybe you're not doing it yourself, but you're going to, uh, what's the, the H&R Block or H &R something block, like that? Yeah. H&R Block or one of, one of these types of places. 90% <laughs> of those situations, those tax returns are missing something, meaning we are leaving money on the table. Okay, for example, in the comments, who has a designated home office? Not just a home office that you're using to get on Zoom, but a home office that you've designated in your taxes so that you can get a reduction in your tax liability, right? It, listen, it's 2023. Everybody should be saying, I've got I a home a office, home even office. if I have an out of home office. Right. Taya, you're in your home office. Or have you designated that in your taxes? You bet your ass I have. <laughs> yeah. I mean, look, you don't want to be a for sale by owner when it comes to your money. You just don't. You need to lean into a professional. If you're running your business like a business, you should be getting advice from some sort of a financial advisor so you can focus on your business. Again, like when we go to for sale by owners, we're like, well, could you do it yourself? Sure, you could do it yourself, but would you be opening yourself up to liability? Is it going to be a lot more work? You're going to have to take time learning things. Yes, of course, you could learn how to do your finances on your own but it's going to take you a lot of time, a lot of energy. And if you're a parent or you're, you know, team lead or whatever you're doing, there's only so many hours in the day. And mama just ain't got time for that. I just, I'd rather lean into my advisor who's a boss babe herself. And I ask her for all the advice at all times. Even if I want to go splurge and spend money on something that could benefit my business, I give her a ring and I'm like, Jacqueline, what do you think? She's mm -hmm. like, well, but if she says yes, I'm like, really? Okay, done. It's happening. Or at the end of the year, I'm like, where do I need to spend money, <laughs> you know, to have write-offs or whatever it is. You, you have to have someone that you can trust. Who's been in that situation on the panel and in the comments where you get to December and it's like, Hey, let's go find some, let's go find some opportunities to spend some money, whether yeah. it's going and buying a car all cash the last week of December or something like that. Dan, uh, we're not talking bottle service here. What have you spent in December to go out there and reduce your tax bill because your accountant said, hey, Dan, let's let's go spend a little bit of money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the car was one thing. Um, and the person that I had actually purchased the car from or through, right, it was brokered. He was buying a G-Wagon to save money on his taxes because there is a certain rule where if you drive a car above, I believe, 7,000 pounds, I'm not the founder of formations here, but I believe that is the number. <laughs> uh, there's a certain tax deduction. So he was doing that. So we both got the tax deductions. And yeah, just like you said, home office, um, rental and home office down in Florida. I am trying to find every and any way possible to not give the government my money. Um, and upon reviewing my taxes and, and my income statements and everything that was going coming in and out, the amount of money that I spent on bottle service and on alcohol this past year makes me sick to my stomach. So that's why I've not drank and I've not done anything in months. And I've always gone on the 6,000 number, uh, the AMA reference, not 7,000 pound. Um, yep. Tristan says 6,500. Again, this is why having a professional in your corner, it might be different in your personal situation yeah. on how you're set up. Okay. You've got to be set up as a business before you can get to that level where you're going to have a car. When I did it with a Ford Explorer, it was over 6,000 pounds. Mm -hmm. I also bought the car under my LLC, paid cash for the deal, bought it. And so my LLC had to become registered as a car, you know, with a dealership, you yeah. know, as a car owner. So it wasn't under Byron Lazine personally when I bought the car from the dealership. So there was actually like a day or two where they had to work that out and register the car to the LLC. Okay. And then bought closed on the deal cash. And I was able to write off that entire amount. And, and that you, did that, you did that at the end, of the end of the year, correct? Like last week of December. That was, that was a few years ago in December. Yep. yep. I think it was December, 2020. Yeah. yeah. I did mine December 28th. 
There you go. Yeah, it was it was, it was the end of the year. Uh, Derek uh, from Southwest Florida, shout out to Derek. Military tank. Buying a military tank. Can't wait to see that video, Derek. Maybe it'll be better than your video today on Instagram. Right, right. Um, right, right. Check, all right. So, so there he is. Checking your entity structure, okay, and your filing election. This may change year to year, okay? Things are going to be a fluid situation. Your business is going to have growth. What works in 2022 may not work in 2023. Taya, what are you doing for retirement to reduce your tax liability right now? Well, th that's shifting right now because I'm still in the middle of my uh, divorce. So no comment there as of yet, but in the past, um, you know, as a couple, if, if one of, if one of you is on W2 income and your company is matching dollar for dollar, then you make those decisions. I was actually investing in stock um, before. And so now I'm going to make some decisions for myself going forward of how I'm going to sock away some money for retirement. So to be determined, Byron. Dan, I know Nicole, I know, uh, personally has some rental property, but we'll get to that. Dan, let's go to you and then we'll go to Nicole. Yeah, I, I believe real estate is definitely the best investment for sure. Um, obviously, it's a little bit of a wonky market right now, weird times. But what I have set up and I, I have had set up for the last three years is a SEP account. So what it is every year, um, and again, I am not a professional. This is not my job. But what I believe uh, happens and what I'm told this happens is instead of me, let's say I owe the IRS $100,000 at the end of the year, what they will do is they will allow me to take money, a certain percentage, and put this into my SEP retirement account untouched by the IRS, and it deduces the money that I am owed to the government. So again, let's use $100,000. If I give the IRS 50, I can then give the my SEP account 30, and then you know the 20 I have to pay. But that's what I have, the SEP account. I have somebody who runs the SEP account that I know, a financial advisor. They invest in the stocks, they invest in all the accounts, and I sit here and sell real estate and sit on webinars with you each and every single day. <laughs> so I love it, Dan. Nicole, we'll go to you and then and then I'll add something here. Well, I so right now we're primarily doing my husband's a teacher, so he's got what is that, a 403, 403 B? 403 so he has B. something coming out of Yep. Yeah. So, I, so again, we have a financial planner for that. So I, I pretty much just dump over there. Um, I, I put some money into Roths though, too, for my kids. So I make sure that I at least have those are set up for the kids though. They are. Yeah. yeah. For, for, for that's mostly just for, for college and stuff just cause there's going to be a lot of them going to college at the same time. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, I, again, even with my financial planner, he just tells me what I need to do and I'll just throw some money over there. Um, but you're talking about rentals. And then I have a rental. Then you have a rental, so that's part of your retirement plan, or is it not part of your retirement? Plan? Oh, it's. I mean, it's it's part of lots of plans. It, one day it's my college plan. One day it's my <laughs> retirement plan. Uh, one day it's 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 part of the plan of maybe you're, why I go into bankruptcy. I mean, it's it's part of lots of plans. But you're, you're on the Glenda Baker plan: buy one house and try to pay the college. I, well, we'll see. Well, I could. I mean, it it can serve lots of purposes. It's. I'm I'm happy we didn't get rid of it so, when when we were gonna. So one thing I did up until income exceeded that level, uh, and and if, listen, you're going to want to do this as well, especially if you're building right now, you're going to want to start a traditional IRA. Okay. You can usually, um, I don't know what the exact amount is. It's usually about $7,000 that you can put in there every single year. If you're making under a certain amount for a single, it might be $80,000. Uh, maybe I did see Pat Kenny, who's a financial planner in the comments. Maybe he can, he can help us out. Let me know exactly. Yeah what that number is right now in 2003 married, it's going to be over a hundred thousand uh, dollars. But, but that's something that's very easy in the beginning to reduce your tax liability is to set up an IRA, a traditional IRA as your income goes up and you exceed, exceed that you're going to have to stop contributing, but that IRA account, which you can set up on any, any different one of these platforms is going to continue to be there for you. And, and you're going to have those stocks and you can even make uh, different changes within that. Hey, somebody might Derek, uh, Derek, <laughs> that chat GPT does his does his tax. Oh my god. <laughs> Listen, Michael, it's, it's a better plan than doing it yourself. <laughs> so put Pat's comment up there. Sixty five hundred dollars a year under the age of fifty, seventy five hundred over the age of fifty. Um, you can put into a traditional IRA. Okay. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Dan. 
Well, I was going to say, I mean, Michael had a, a good question. Uh, I always thought a SEP IRA was for a self, was for self-employed individual. I'm now an employee of my own S corp. Can I still put money into a SEP IRA? Again, I'm not the formations professional here, but I do, and I have an I have an S corp, and I am an employee, or I guess I am the the owner, operator, CEO of the S corp. So yes, you can still put money in your SEP IRA, and I think the the best way to go about it too, like the money that I have in there, I haven't check that account. I know Eric, the broke agent's kind of running the behind the scenes right now. I know that he checks his uh, cryptocurrency more than he ch would check Tinder and or a dating app. He ah. is constantly refreshing it. Um, whereas for me, like, I don't even know what the amount is right now because I'm just focused on putting the money there and forgetting that it even exists. That money to me is not even my money. I, can, I won't use it. I won't borrow from it. Nothing. It's just hopefully when I am 60 years old or whenever I'm allowed to finally get my hands on it, is when I will touch it. That's smart. All right. So with the time we have left and, and we're going to get into some question and answer time here. So fill up the, the Q and a, if you've got questions, because listen, a question about what Tay is doing with her business to be super successful is a leading indicator to make sure you've got money to pay your taxes. So whether it's about marketing, whether it's about social media, whether it's about getting listings right now, fill up the Q and a, cause we're about to dive into that. Number one, set up an account system. Okay. So number one, business checking, flowing into tax savings, flowing into your household, uh, checking account, flowing into your personal savings, have that structure tomorrow. If you don't already have it, you need an EIN number to have a business checking account. Okay. So make sure you're set up for your situation as an LLC or an S corp, which means you need to be working with a professional in your corner. There's an offer down below with formation. So you can have a conversation with them to make sure you're in the right path. Make sure that those transfers are set up automatically for your account. So you have money in your tax savings. That's going to be the foundation to be able to be super successful come tax time every single year where you're not going to have stress in April. I'm, I'm, I feel like we need to go again. I guess it depends on who's really watching here though, too. Cause I feel like there's even a little bit more elementary. I have a great breakdown of like, cause there's maybe even things that people are forgetting to include when it comes time for taxes too. I mean, I could put the link in here, but like, I, I think that being organized with what is, you yeah, know, send the link to Bobby so you can what is it like, what is a, like, what is included? What can you include? Don't forget. Like, again, if you're forgetting the board do, or again, I, everyone works differently but again i have a, a spreadsheet I'll, I'll send it to bobby now but i think even more elementary like make sure that you are really including everything that you're supposed to and things that you don't even think of you know, i mean you're talking about cars but again let's like water this down in like a cell phone like let's buy you know like it's, it's Anna. i know when i was talking to my accountant this was maybe a couple months ago we were talking about i have a crypto account and you said your, your husband's checking your crypto constantly if he's actually making active trades he better be really organized with that paperwork. Right now, the IRS and your tax professional is going to request paperwork for every single crypto trade. So not trying to get your husband in trouble. <laughs> just make sure that that's something that you have. And I'm, I'm certain that you guys do have that organized. Even, even Venmo. Like my account Venmo. just sent me over a 300-page uh, Venmo report. Like, hey, what are these charges? And yep. they are like the most random from – $20 to a $70 haircut to a $5 bet. Like it could be anything. So make sure that you, you're aware of that too. Like all of your, all of your Venmo, everything they they watch everything. And on that note, anything past them on that note at the end of every month, like whether you're going into Venmo, like Dan was saying, or you're going into your credit card statement. So for me, when I go onto American express, you can go and tag any expense. That's not obvious. Right. And a lot of these expenses aren't obvious because it's owned by an LLC. And so even though it could be that you purchase something for your business at X store, it's showing up as something completely different on your breakdown of your credit card expenses. And you don't want to have to sit down for four hours with your accountant at the end of the year going through line item by line item every single month, go through. And if it's a business expense, tag it as a business expense. If it's a uh, marketing or if it's whatever I go through now at the end of every month and I just tag it. And anything that's personal, I tag it that too. So then that way, when she downloads it and she has access, I, you know, to all of my, uh, whether it be my payroll service or my credit card statements, I send all of that to her. So we stay on top of it throughout the year. So at the end of the year, we don't have to have, a, you know, a week long meeting. 
if you're going to use a credit card, that's one credit card, not I'm going to have five credit cards and whichever one ha has a limit left on it, I'm going to use and have all my business you know, expenses scattered all over the place. One credit card for all business expenses or one debit card connected to the business uh, checking account so that all expenses for your business are in the same place. Uh, 101 Tricks is to have that specific business credit card and actually, just, yeah, absolutely, Pat. You know, be no, disciplined no, Patrick, where no, you're not going and using a whole bunch of um, different accounts. And if you don't have the money to go spend, you probably shouldn't be doing it, right? You mm -hmm. probably should be getting around somebody in your market who maybe can go and invest in those leads if you don't have any leads. So that's a whole other um, topic that we can get into here. What questions do we have, Bobby, that we haven't addressed? Throw us some likes here too, if you appreciate. So I saw some app um, tracking uh, suggestions in the in the comments, and listen, it's not always going to be mileage. Okay, if you pay off the car, sometimes it's going to be writing off when you're set up in a, in a certain way in S corp. It might be just writing off the gas expense. A lot of times it's mileage, but that's not always the case. Mm -hmm. It's again why you want to talk to your professional. We've got the link down below for formations. It may be gas for you, um, but is anybody using a, a mileage app? No. no, no, no. What are you doing? Guessing? Yep. Guessing. Well, I mean, you, uh, if you drive the same car all the time, you're looking you at the car. I, yeah. 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 And you just, I talked to my CPA about like what percentage right. makes sense. And we, we estimate in a safe we, yeah. range. We get, um, guess, one, guesstimate. One thing I wanted to mention about paying your bills on one credit card the benefit of that, and again, this could be a whole other show that we do, Byron, but how do you guys think I went to Greece first class? Like 100,000. No, I put all of my business expenses on one business credit card. And I had so many fucking points that by the time it came time for me to make my dream trip, I used miles and points to book a first class right. round trip ticket to Greece. And That's right. I only spent, I was there for 11 days and I only spent $5,000 cash and I went, stayed at five-star places, five-star restaurants, everything. And, um, so that honestly, like there's so many other perks and benefits to making sure you lean into your accountant and not just a CPA, like a business advisor who's going to say, you know what, I've researched all the credit cards and this one it like the blue sapphire, whatever it is. It's like, we've done our research. There's limited fees or blah, 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 blah. And here are all the benefits. You want to make sure that you're looking at this holistically and not just about filing your taxes. Well, and I think too, like I'm going to give Byron a rare compliment here and I, it's gonna, <laughs> uh, I'm going to uh, throw up before I even do it. Not only just getting a good accountant and, and a CPA, right. But surrounding yourself with people that are doing things that you want to be doing or that you want to be like, I remember we were traveling a ton and Byron was watching me, you know, book my flights on like Expedia. I was using different cards. I was all over the place. And Byron suggested just to download the Delta app and apply. Of course for it was Delta. Delta. Uh, only Delta. I mean, he's a New Yorker. Only so of course it's Delta. And like so Delta. now only Delta. Now I am in the Delta lounge drinking cucumber water. Yes, every time baby. I drive. gotta be in the lounge. It, yes. It He'll incredible. ditch me. He won't even take me in the lounge. He'll be like, yeah, oh, you, not in the lounge. Yeah. Yeah. you stay down there. We're so, in the Sky Club, babe. We got to so be in the Sky Club. <laughs> not only is it just about CPA and accountants too, but it is also about just getting, you know, with people that know what they're doing or maybe that have already made the mistakes that you've made like we're doing right now so that way you can learn from them. And now I'm off the Expedia app. And now again, like I said, I'm drinking cucumber water, which is the best uh, in the Delta so, Lounge. Because so somebody just asked what, because we're on the credit card and point topic here a little bit. What's the best credit card to use? If you're flying twice a month, it's definitely going to be one of the, you know, Amex accounts. Certainly if you're using Delta, then having Amex Platinum, so you can, so you can use some of those um, benefits. If you're not traveling, you're, you're just staying in your market. I would argue that the best credit card you can use is the one that's affiliated with your business checking account. Are they going to give you 2% back, you know, basically off of your bill? Uh, because whether it's 2% or it's points, it's it's what value am I getting back? Right. So don't go getting a travel credit card, an Amex you know, travel card. If you don't travel, that, that wouldn't make any sense. You're going to be paying an annual fee for no reason. And you're likely going to be able to get a great deal with your bank that's affiliated with your business checking. So it's going to be a personal um, solution for you. 
I wife and I use separate have- banks to, um, to use the same bank for all your accounts. So my wife and I have separate accounts, but we do not have separate banks. Thanks, yeah. Everything's Bank of America for us because they've got great technology. I'm not, you know, pushing Bank of America by any means, but I, you know, I want to use great technology so that I can make an easy transfer if I want to put more money over there. Yeah. So I can have those automatic transfers from uh, the family business, the the business account to the family account, and mm-hmm. so those those accounts, uh, those transfers rather happening into each account seamlessly as opposed to bank to bank, it's going to be a little bit more complicated. I agree. I, I'm all mine are again, my kids accounts. Cause again, I have to same give, bank. I have to give them money. Yeah. So everything's in the same 100%. I think there's like at least six or seven accounts right in there. Yeah. Audrey, I would love some creative deductions. Maybe then, yeah, some creative deductions, maybe that nobody's thought of. Um, and then she says she hasn't filed yet. Uh, she wants to make sure. Not a big fat check. Hey, any creative deductions that, um, you think are pretty unique. Well, I mean, these aren't going to be unique. These are going to be pretty basic. The best thing I ever did was hire a salaried assistant. And I cannot tell you how many people I meet that are like, oh, I pay someone hourly, you know, a couple times a week to handle da, 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 da. No, my business grew and, and I built it exponentially once I hired what I like to call a big girl assistant. You know what I mean? Is that a W-2 employee through your S Corp? Yes. Yes. So you have to pay insurance. You have to get workers. Comp. I don't have to pay. I don't have to pay um, health insurance. Is that what you're referring to? No, just just liability insurance. Like God forbid. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. So like everything through. I use Gusto um, mm-hmm. for all my payroll stuff. But honestly, that has all been one of the biggest um, tax write offs for me. Is having not only something that's a write off, but something that's also helping me grow my business. Um, And I would be very careful, again, not an accountant, none none of us are, but when it comes to writing things off, you want to be legit about it. You want to make sure that whatever you're writing off, I think there was some famous story about um, a news anchor who wanted to write off his suits because he was wearing them on the air all the time. And the IRS was like, nope. Yes. Taya, somebody in the comments said, can I write off, write off my hair? You cannot write off your you hair. Can't write off no. Your hair. no. And again, like we, again, bounce everything off of your CPA. But my CPA told me this famous story about how this newscaster was like, well, I only wear the suits in the studio for the thing. And they're my custom Italian. Da, 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 da. The IRS doesn't give a shit. Like if you can wear it anywhere else, it's not a uniform. It's just not. So right. You can get creative and bounce ideas off your with your CPA, but for me, I just go with the tried and true. What cannot be disputed, because I don't want to have to fight for anything in an audit. Like if anything, I write off all my travel, a lot of my food and beverage, um, and any time that I spend money on marketing, whether it be all my video content, all of that stuff, anything that I use to build my business is a quote unquote write off. Tay, the assistant one was was a great example, and if, and if somebody's not ready to bite off a big salary using a virtual assistant. You know, we use virtue desk in the real estate company. We use them in, in bam. That's something that you get a double win from when you have a VA because you can put it on your Amex or your credit card of choice. You can get points. You're not beholden to like those W two taxes. Right. And you can write the entire thing off your tax accountant. When you, when you sign up for a virtual assistant for the year and pay that off for the year is not going to question that at all. That's going to be a hundred percent tax deductible against your business, against your income. And you're going to get the points. You don't even have to pay straight cash when when you do that. Here's one thing I want to pay forward though. You need to be very careful. If you're one of those people who, and again, like I'm doing this, like we're watching a after school special disclaimer. I am not a financial advisor. I am not a CPA, but I live in the litigious state of California. And I've got to tell you when it comes to hiring employees, and how strict the EDD is. If it walks like a duck and talks like a duck, they're going to call it a fucking duck. Okay. So if you have an assistant who you you're saying they have to be there at a certain time, they have to, they have to leave by a certain time and you're not paying them overtime and you want to pay them a 1099 independent contractor. No, my friend, if you're treating them like an employee and you're paying them like a 1099, That is a problem. And you may think that you're saving money right now, but you could get screwed royally depending on the state that you live in. So please, I beg of you, 
consult with your CPA or your financial advisor about your write-offs, about your business, about your overhead, all of that stuff. But when it comes to hiring employees, you want to do it the right way way and only a licensed professional will be able to guide you properly so you don't get screwed with a, an IRS, IRS bill and you also don't get sued. Taya, so like I mentioned in the very beginning, I had a sales manager and a full-time assistant and I was literally Venmoing them or just writing them checks each and yeah. every single month. And that's why I just got that letter right from last year saying I owed $26,000 because it was kind of a warning shot. Like, hey, if you're not the only person within your S Corp, right? Like I'm the only I guess I'm like the president CEO, right. but really these people should be W2 employees. And if you're not, and you're not paying the insurance, here are the fines and here are the fines per person. So if you have seven people on yes. your staff, on your payroll that you are Venmoing or just giving checks to, or however you're doing it, they will find out and they will find you and it will be a lot of money. And if you get a disgruntled employee yeah, yeah. Who then wants to go even take it a step further, now you're really fucked. So just when, when you're running a business, this is, you know, for all of the Gen Zers out there, this is adulting at the highest level. Yes. But if you want the big money and you want the freedom of being an entrepreneur, you're going to have to step up and actually take responsibility for your business and really run it like such. Hey, can, can we get a couple of likes here for the amount of F-bombs that Taya has dropped? Because <laughs> nobody, nobody expected that. But somebody had a, a good question because I'm actually curious too, because I write off every vac like vacation. It's never a vacation. It's always work. But somebody in the comments asked, how do you write off vacation? Uh, even when your travel is vacation, how do you write that off? You don't go on vacation. You go yeah. on business travel. That's how you write it off. Don't yeah. take vacations. Take business trips. And if you want to go maybe take an hour or two off. Now, technically, you should be dividing the time on your business trip from work and pleasure. That's, that's you know, you're going to talk to your personal, again, we're, we're not financial advisors, but technically you're going to talk to whoever you're using there and have that conversation of breaking up the time if you're going to have any pleasure on your work trips. But I would be taking work trips and, um, and you know, using that as a, as a way to either connect on a conference, connect on a meeting or, or what have you, Dan. I just did this. I just went down to Florida and um, I was there for a few days working and Tom Ferry's edge event marketing happened to just be in Tampa at that time. Very lucky, lucky Lee for me. And uh, yeah, you know, I went there, I spoke on a, a panel for 30 minutes and it was a business trip. Yeah. And Carly Bora Bora, Bora, Bora. might not be able to get away, get away with that one, you know, yeah. but if, but if you're traveling where someone can, can help in your business, it's, it's going to make sense. Our transaction coordinator services consider a business expense right off 100%, 100% of that expense. Now, what Tay and Dan were talking about, if you're paying that person under the table, cash, or, I mean, Venmo, as long as you're going to file at the end of the year with them, you can you could technically pay them Venmo or PayPal. I have vendors that I pay PayPal still, even though I've got a bunch of W-2s and all kinds of other types of employees. It's about how you're going to categorize it, but you, you definitely... You need to, at the end of the year, send them, um, I'm blanking on what that form is called, 1099, mm -hmm. uh, to be able to make sure, hey, they're going to file it on their taxes, you're going to file it on your taxes, and it's going to be all on the up and up. But yeah, you should be writing off 100% of that. Uh, what other questions do we have here? So somebody asked, what is an S-Corp? I see that one up there, Bobby. What is, what is an S-Corp? An S-Corp is basically an LLC. Okay, I mean, it is, it is an LLC, but it's a classification of an LLC that gives you further tax advantages. I know Formations had said on the, on the last one that you're probably going to need to you know, have an income of 80000 or more before S-Corp <clears throat> makes sense for you, and it may not even make sense for you then. You could be making $3 million a year, and it may not make sense for you on your personal setup in your, in your state, You're definitely going to want to be at the very least an LLC or an S corp, um, hire a spouse. And this pet by, by the way, good old Pat Kenny, come through. <laughs> Put Patrick, uh, Kenny's Instagram in the handle. He's a 5am call moderator, uh, along with, along with our good friend, Sarah Taya. Yeah. Uh, Pat, Pat does Saturdays Pat's Pat's a financial planner. So he knows his stuff. Uh, let's put his Instagram in the comments if we can hire a spouse, pay them to max out other 401k write off the salary and expenses, have them contribute all dollars into a 401k write off 
for your business and stash retirement monies. This is these are the kind of strategies that when you're talking to somebody like Pat, when you're talking to um, you know formations about setting up your taxes the right way, these are the types of discussions that you get into where you can really make sure you're paying less on your taxes. Uh, Christina, when you designate your home office, do you just measure square footage? They're going to ask you what's the square footage. They're going to do a percentage of the house, right? They're going to ask you total square footage and then that square footage. It's going to be a conversation you're going to have with uh, the professional that's doing your taxes for sure. But you're going to be able to get some type of tax benefit when you designate the space in your house. Well, but then it's also internet. Right? It's part of the electrical, like, like all yeah. of that also plays a role in that too. Any questions um, or final thoughts from the panel on what everybody should be th thinking about here is we're, it's March 1st. We're closing out quarter one. The best way we can ensure that we don't have any stress come tax time, whether we're file, whether we're paying monthly quarterly or we're paying, you know, a lump sum at the end of the year. Teo, what are you focused on in your business right now to make sure you've got multiple checks coming in so there is no fear in what you've got to pay to the IRS? And you're in a, you're in a highly taxed state in California. So what yeah. are you doing to make sure that that's not a problem for you? Well, this is a three-part answer. Number one is anything you track and measure will grow, right? So the moment I started becoming really obsessed with my numbers, I was able to really feel more confident in what I can spend money on and what I should not spend money on. Um, secondly, it was a really big motivator for getting more organized, sharpening uh, my tools and refining my systems. Um, I ended the year in a very weak spot financially and I came out guns a blazing in January and I'm on track to have one of the best years I've ever had in my career. Um, and I have no hesitation in that. The, the number that I have um, on my vision board right now, I am over on track to get that number. So I just, I feel completely fearless. Uh, but the last part of my answer is do not step over a dollar to save a dime. Don't be another F-bomb. <laughs> Don't be a fucking cheap ass. Do not be a first mobile <laughs> owner for your business. Like practice what you preach. Hire if you want to be a high-end business professional who's making big money and saving big money and having peace of mind and being fulfilled on the inside, then you need to hire a professional to guide you along on this journey. Otherwise, you're going to think that you're saving money and you're really just screwing yourself. A hundred percent. Thank you so much. Debbie Sanders in the comments said, I was on an impression vac vacation business travel. You have to have business appointments set up prior to trip. Absolutely. And what Taya just said, you better track and have that recorded in your calendar, in your calendar. That's what are huge. all the business accounts separated or, or the business appointments separated from uh, the pleasure appointments. Dan, uh, final thoughts on what people can do to make sure they close out quarter one in a real successful way. So that uh, all this other stuff that we talked about, which is part of having a business, which is part of adulting, like Taya said earlier, isn't a problem, isn't a stress, isn't a concern. Yeah, I just think that you need to save your money, right? I think uh, we see a lot of times, uh, me being a little bit younger and being uh, immature in ways, um, I didn't save money in the very beginning, right? Maybe I went out and I bought a watch or I went out and bought maybe too expensive of a suit or I, or I flew first class for no reason. I think people need to remember that you have to have a rainy day fund, right? So if all of this is great and we've had such a great, great success the last three years, four years, if things start to slow down a little bit, you need to have that rainy day fund because the IRS will come knocking. So make sure that you're stashing some money away. Make sure that you are saving money out of your checks. Do not make these mistakes. Learn from ours and get on your game. Awesome. Thank you, Dan. Nicole, final thoughts for I close to, quarter one. I mean, I have to agree with Dan. I think the most, it, it, and I'll, I'll tell all the agents to even sort of getting through the fourth quarter, because obviously the fourth quarter is really dictating sort of the first quarter, you know, again, say, say where you can, you know, again, my husband and I, we even have sort of a threshold on our, on our, um, home account too, where if it hits a number, we start putting it into like a savings, like a completely different savings account that again, we don't necessarily want to touch or need to touch. But again, if, if there ever is a time that we do need to touch it again, we've been really good about once we hit certain numbers in, in, in certain accounts, we throw it into this little sort of additional slush fund. So again, I think biggest, again, I'm with you, Dan, obviously get yourself, 
you know, super organized, but yes, be good at saving money. Um, I think that's, that's huge for quarter one. Yeah. Bobby, I'm sending you a link. I want you to put this up on the screen here when, when it comes over. Um, uh, before we do that, yeah. Emailing you before we do that, my, fi my final thoughts here, guys, this year, it's going to be a bumpy road. Okay. It's also when the biggest businesses are built. I came into the business in 2012 Taya, you talking, we were talking about earlier when we, when we all came into the business, Nicole, Taya, myself, we, we came in, in a market that was much different from the market the last two years. 2023 is a huge opportunity for all of us to really make a difference in our careers. Okay. To go out there and build something super unique and super special in our market by doing the things we know we need to get up and do every single day. Okay. Mm -hmm. While the, the mark, don't follow the trend of your MLS and let your business crash because you're doing the same things as 2022. Go out there and make all the calls that you need to make so that you have multiple checks coming in. I think getting yourself into a situation where you've got uh, a check every single week is absolutely critical for your success for your business. Okay. That may be a solo agent, maybe a team agent, maybe running a team, whatever the case is for you. Get a check coming in every single week. Okay, that's going to that's gonna be how you're going to protect against this. Um, Bobby, did you get that link? I'm waiting on you, or just go to formationscorp.com. All right, they've got something on the front, front of the website I want to show you guys. Um, and then we're going to bounce off here. All right, so Bobby, go and sh uh, sh share that. And there's a link below. It's in the comments as well. Uh, scroll down. Never overpaying your taxes again. Right there, right there. That 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 table right there. Okay. Sole proprietor versus S Corp. Okay. Sole proprietor net income. Your self-employment tax should be 18,360 bucks. Okay. So if you're paying more than that, you're already making a mistake. And then click on S Corp. Being an S Corp, look at that. 7,344 on the self-employment tax. So have a conversation down below with formations. It might be time for you to go to S Corp. Certainly, if you're not an LLC. Go have a conversation, figure out what's going to be best for you. We've got a link below. Everybody that signed up for this event, we'll send you a debrief with question and answer. We're going to work with formations to get some of the questions that maybe were unanswered or maybe um, weren't fully answered. We're going to send that off to you. We'll send you a link if you were coming in late where you can replay this video, share this with somebody who needs to get ready uh, and not get stressed out about taxes, who wants to pay less in taxes. And please subscribe to the BAM YouTube channel. Taya, thank you so much. I know you were super busy today. Dan, okay. I know you were not as busy, but thank you. <laughs> no, I was. I just, I just don't, I just don't tell you about it. I don't want you to know what I'm doing. <laughs> I don't want you to know where I am at any time during the day. You are the IRS, Byron. D Dan, I'll see I'll see you in Arizona, which yeah. sounds like Eric's wedding. Sounds like a work trip to me, by the way. Sounds like a work trip to <laughs> me too. I, I would not be going to Eric's wedding if we were not in business together. Yes. So there there you go. Uh congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> congratulations eric yes nicole thank you so much for taking time here i am thank all of you guys please subscribe to the channel we'll see you guys on the next one bye